Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation and it's special. This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Delighted as always, it's been a while to be joined by Mr. Pat Barrett, King of Manchester. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, King of Manchester. Stand well, I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of people now going to try and dethrone me now you've said that. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Um, how you been, Pat? All good? I'm good, thanks. I've been good. I've been good. Um, let's just uh, have a little recap from the weekend just gone. Did you watch uh, Anthony Joshua's uh, sensational knockout of uh, Kubrat Pulev? Yeah, I did. Um, done well. It boxed well. Uh, like I said, you know, I'm never one to criticise anybody what wins the fight. <laughs> in the style to do. Um, I know what the next question is going to be, though. <laughs> do you? Yeah. How do you think he's going to do with Tyson? Well, yeah, I mean, look, it's, 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 a, it's a fight that we're going to talk about until we get to see it. So, you know, wh wh where do you put them to at the moment? You know, who, who edges who? Well, the only reason why Tyson edges it with me, because I know him from going way back. Um, I did a bit of work with Tyson. Um... A long time ago, his dad bought him to us, and it's just the way I just the way I go off his mindset. He, he delivers what he says he's going to do, Tyson. And I'm not just saying that. I remember I was in Germany with him one time, and he, you know, whatever he says he's going to do, he does it. Yeah, and with Tyson, he'll, he'll, he'll think long and hard about it. It's just like what he said about Wilder when he was like 25 stone, 27 stone, big fat guy. And he was just saying, I'm going to knock Wilder out. Everyone looking at him laughing, thinking, come on, mate. Yeah. The only person that believed that was Tyson and his dad. Yeah. Tyson's predictions are very good. And um, I do believe in what he says. And I think, if, you know, the second fight when he fought Deontay Wilder was amazing. Better than the first. And I thought he won the first one. Okay. So once you see that, after so many years out, come on, you can never write Tyson up. Nobody could. And it's a scary situation. Even Joshua's got to say, wow, this guy, so, I mean, he's got a way of getting into your head as well. Yeah, I mean, Vladimir Klitschko found that out with Tyson Fury, didn't he? About getting into his head. Because that looked like he did get into Klitschko's head. He's good at what he does, mate. He's very good at what he does. So, yes, uh, well, listen, we hopefully will see what happens with that situation next year. Um, it's been uh, just over a week and a half uh, since your guys' fantastic win, uh, Lyndon Arthur against um, Anthony Yard. So, uh, yeah, have you took it all in over the last sort of 10 days or so? I've took it all in and I've, I've calmed down a lot more than what I was. And the only thing that really peed me up about the situation was the lack of respect that another fighter had for another fighter. Yeah. And it could have been so easy the other way around where we could have gave them the lack of respect because we stuck to a game plan and we, we, we come out victorious on what we said we was going to do. Yeah. They stuck to a game plan and they, they lost. Yeah. And their game plan was to knock Lyndon Arthur out. Okay. They never thought that they was going to go the distance. Because Tunde J was so confident that I should have put a bet on with him. Yeah. He said that Anthony Ad would knock Lyndon Arthur out within, within any round. How in denial was he? If I was him, I'd keep my mouth shut and I would, I would climb under into a cave and I wouldn't want to show my face because it's embarrassing when you talk like that. Yeah. And then to come out and say, oh, Lyndon, uh, Lyndon, he, they was robbed again. You've been in denial. So, I mean, look, th th there has been a lot said after after that fight. And um, I've I seen Lyndon on social media more so. You're not really on social media a lot, Pat. And 
obviously Lyndon being a fighter, he's more active and vocal and he's, he, you know, he's made references to, you know, give me the credit, let it be about a Lyndon Arthur win as opposed to an Anthony Yard loss. Thank you. Thank you. Says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like everybody expected Lyndon to lose and even though he won, everybody still, I mean, look, I've had a lot of good views on um, social about Lyndon and a lot of people saying, you know, forget giving him the rematch, do this, do that. And it's been great for people to give their comments on it. 25% um, for Yard, 75% for Lyndon. You know I mean? It's, it's really, I don't know what more to say. You know, when you do something as good as what Lyndon's done, yeah, and he's done it single-handedly with a left jab. Come on. Pat, we, I mean, listen, we, we know how uh, crucial a jab can, can be into, into winning a fight, but we saw instances, back-to-back -back shows on BT, where the jab literally won those fighters. And I'm talking about Joe Joyce as well against Daniel Dubois and your, your Lyndon Arthur against Anthony Yard, where the jab basically won them the fight. No doubt. Yeah, because, I mean... Don't get me wrong, it's not like we used the jab for that fight, yeah? Bear in mind, if you go back and you look at Lyndon, Lyndon's jab is improving without a doubt. Lyndon's boxing ability is improving without a doubt. It's what we teach in this gym. It's what I teach as a trainer. Any one of my fighters, you know, we like the Kronk's gym. Any, anyone from the Kronk can obviously show that, you know, they've got a great jab. You know, you had Tommy Ernst, you had Matt Bruce, you had X amount of fighters, Dennis Andrews, even. It's what Emmanuel Stewart taught. It's what Brian used to, it's what I teach in this gym. So the left jab was, um, we worked on it even more, considering what we knew, how he had um, suffered with color off. And I know Lyndon has got just as good as jab as that. So when Tundi's saying, oh, well, ain't no color off jab, he's right. How can it be a color off jab? He's got Lyndon Alpha and the two different people. But don't take away that Lyndon hasn't got a good left jab. And that's where they went wrong. Pat, what um, I, I saw some comments um, that you made that if the fight, which was a close fight, if the fight had swung in Yard's favour, you wouldn't have had any issues with that? No, no. Because what, what's the point of me having an issue with it? I can't change it. I can't change the fact, whatever it is. You know, I would have just said, no, what, no. I would have got Lyndon. I'll put my arm around him. I would have said, you know what, son? I'm proud of you. Yeah, because this kid was meant to knock you out. Yeah. Even Lyndon had that 1% doubt that he could get beat. Even Lyndon had that 1% doubt that he could get knocked out. Any fighter's got that in the mind. That's why we work so hard in the gym to don't get knocked out and to don't get beat. Yeah. But they was in denial. In denial is like, where's your plan B? What if you do get beat? No, nobody goes in the ring saying that they're going to get beat or expects to get beat. But you've got to have fear, haven't you? You've got to have that bit of fear that, that inspires you to say, no, nah, I don't want to get beat. I mean, Lyndon got hit with a good shot. He could have took the floor. But he's, he's thinking, no, I'm winning this fight. I'm not going out like this. And that was in the 12th round. Lyndon was honest. Sorry. Lyndon was honest to say that he got hit with two good shots. Yeah. He admitted it. He didn't say that Andy Yard couldn't punch. He was aware of it. Again, we showed him respect. Pat, there's no obviously issue with, with Tundi or Anthony Yard believing that they won the fight. But I suppose I'll ask you about their comments since then, especially Anthony Yard's comments straight after the fight, where he said that he won't be accepting that as a defeat. Is that the issue that you had as opposed to them just thinking they won the fight? That The comments that they said that they're not accepting this as a loss? Do you know what? I can't even comment on that because that's what I call about being in denial. Yeah, and I don't blame Yard for this. You know, it's like, if I am if I come out now shouting all oh, this and that and whatever, Lyndon's only going to shout with me. Yeah? But I was silent for him and say, listen, I'll shut up, Lyndon. There's no point going out. You're making yourself look stupid, son. Just accept the loss. Yeah? We'll learn by that because if you would have done this, then you wouldn't allow that to happen. And if Andy Yard would have jumped all over Lyndon, the same way he jumped all over, then... Things might have been different. They could have had different ways, of what, but they didn't do it. For whatever reason, whatever we was doing was stopping them from doing what he wanted to do. 
it was cancelled out. Lyndon's distance, and no one's not giving credit for. Okay, Lyndon, your distances was good. How you kept that, that distance between you and Anthony Yard. Yeah, and every time Anthony Yard got set to throw a punch, he was offset him by throwing that jab, using that jab at the right time, okay, to offset him. Yeah, the way you timed it and you got good power in the jab, it was accurate. Yeah, not every jab was a powerful, accurate jab, but say seven out of ten were good jabs. Yeah, that were hurting him. Yeah. I mean, just at the end of the first round, when Lyndon started getting the jab off, he started finding a home for it. His face started redding up from there. He got hit with a jab right on the nose. His nose went red, and at the end, tides changed. It was unexpected. So the trainer's telling him to do one thing, but bear this in mind, the trainer's not taking them jabs. Tundia J ain't getting hit with them jabs. Yeah, it's okay. You've got to put yourself in the fighter's shoes to say sometimes it's hard to tell a fighter to do something, yeah, when he can't do it. Sometimes the game plan, you've got to say, fuck the game plan now. Go out there and do this. I've done that with Zelfo when he was fighting um, Donovan. Uh, what's he called? Like, uh, the Irish kid. Eric Donovan. Eric Donovan. I said to Zelfo, fuck the game plan now, son. Forget about the game plan, what was working on. Zelfo said to me, I'm a winning. I said, it's close, son. Forget the game plan. You need to go out there. I said, look at him. I said, he's tired. You need to go out there now and belt this kid. Yeah. And that's what he done. He slipped and thrown. He used what we was working on. Yeah. And sometimes game plans don't come off. Sometimes you, the, the, the opposition's using a better game plan and you're still trying to find the same one. There's only one thing that Anthony had had is a puncher's chance that could have finished the fight at any time, like he said. But we wasn't going to allow that. Yeah, I'm saying, Linda, know what you're standing on the ropes for. Don't sit on the ropes with work or not being in get one of what I've seen. When I seen what he did with Color Off, I knew that if Linda sits on the ropes, like what he was doing with Spellman, then that's their key. Okay? I said to Linda, none of that sit on the ropes like what he did with Spellman. And he goes, Yeah, no, but Spellman's a different fighter. I said, As long as you're aware of that, yeah, as long as you're aware of that, that's good. Pat, are we definitely going to see a rematch? I think, why not? But I don't think the rematch should be when we want the rematch. Yeah. Look, can I ask you the question? You've been in boxing a long time, haven't you? How many times do you know the challenge is to get a rematch? Well, it happens. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen. I'm not, I'm not, I know. But how many times in history of boxing? Really? It's not many, is it? Yeah. Bear in mind, we are the champions, okay? We're the champions. He come to it with nothing. Yeah. The WBO belt was vacant. That was the vacant belt on top of the, um, the Commonwealth. We wasn't meant to win that. Apparently, we wasn't meant to win that. Yeah. If Anthony Yard would have won this fight, do you honestly think we would have got the rematch? And we're the champions? No. Why would we not have got the rematch? Because Anthony Yard would have went on to do bigger and better things with BT. It wasn't about Lyndon. Yeah, everybody, the, the, the betting up, the booking office was ridiculous. How can you have such a fighter like Lyndon that box for England, yeah? Been to GB, done so much, yeah? Mate, it's like they've not done their own work. I don't know. It's like they've just come out of a cave. They're fighting Lyndon Yard when they're saying they're going to knock him out. Like, what the, what planet are these from? Come on, man. It's a joke. Pat, if, if we do see a rematch, do we see the same type of fight? Or is there a possibility we don't see that type of fight that we, we saw and that performance from Lyndon and Anthony as well? Do we, could we see a completely different fight in a second fight? Look, right? If this fight ever took place again, if it did take place, it would be a total different fight. Yeah. Anthony Ard would be a different fighter. And Lyndon would be a different fighter. We wouldn't fight the same fight. Yeah, we'd work differently. What I took advantage of, yeah, the Anthony Hard is scared of a jab. Yeah, he got knocked out with a jab. No disrespect. Yeah, and he didn't get knocked out because he was hurt. He got knocked out because he was lack of experience, so let's say. Yeah, because he didn't know how to deal with it. He, he emptied the he emptied the uh, the tank, so he had nothing left. So any punch really could have stopped him. Do you know what I mean? There's no fault of his own, okay? He only done what he was asked to do. 
empty the tank. Yeah, no, he emptied it. Nearly had him out there. Nearly. But nearly wasn't good enough, was it? So if we fought him again, I would work on a total different thing for Lyndon. Totally different. I already know what I, I know. I already know what my plan would be. Yeah, I'm working on it now. As soon as Lyndon comes in, I'm working on it now. But I honestly think Lyndon Harper deserves to have his time now as being as be as be in this kind of fight. Oh, I think the the rematch should come as a, but Lyndon should have other fights now. And and the yard should have other fights and rebuild because it's not an interesting fight now. It's not. And what makes it interesting or appealing? Just so Anthony Howard can revenge his loss. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But, I mean, would I want to see that fight again? Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing the fight again. I'm not saying... But you're saying yourself, Pat, that if it had gone the other way, yeah, that you wouldn't have argued with it. So that indicates that even from your side, that you see it as a close fight. So... Do you know what? Do you know why I see it as a close fight? Do you want to know why I see it as a close fight? Go. Because Lyndon only threw a jab, yeah. But saying that, yeah, they only threw they only threw one or two power shots themselves. So when you're talking about the power shots, when we go and look at it, yeah, Lyndon landed an uppercut. Yeah, I, I think it got about the twelfth round or eleventh round. Okay, you know, Lyndon landed a couple of right hands. You know, it's it's it, it, it's been picking here. It's, I'm not into that. Oh well, he did, he did. Yeah, we got the decision. Yeah, we we didn't make the decision. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of people seem the same way. The left jab stole the fight. And, and I'd say he stole the fight. I didn't say we won it by a big margin. I'd say we didn't have to steal the fight. But that was my aim of the game. Anyway, regardless what, yeah, keep him at distance and just keep beating him to the jab, pick the points up. I remember looking at a video uh, where Tundi was asking about punch stats from that night. Have you seen punch stats and, and to see how many jabs were landed from each fighter? <laughs> Do you know, to be quite honest with you, I've seen it in the first first five rounds. Yeah. The first round was, it was like pretty late. It was very tactical. They were both waiting. Yeah. And Lyndon was waiting to time. Once he got that rhythm in the jab, he found it then. Yeah. Once that first jab landed just before the bell. Yeah. Or the second jab landed. And I remember it was a cracking jab. It was flush on the face. And I seen, I seen his eyes change. And that's when I come back because I wasn't watching Lyndon now. I'm watching Anthony because what I was trying to do myself was reoccur what happened over in Russia. Yeah, because you know when a fighter's got that in his mind, it's still in the back of your mind. It's no matter what a trainer says, you might be able to train him physically, but how are you going to deroute that mentally? So, I mean, you've got to talk to him. You've got to like him. I got into Lyndon's head in that fight because when I was talking to Lyndon, I'm talking, can't I'm talking to him the same way I'm telling him in here, the same way I was telling him every day of his life, you'll be that me, you'll beat him. You've got the you've got the ability to beat him. There's something about it, but you've got this to beat that me, yeah. I asked for that fight the first time we signed with her, Frank Warren. Yeah. Just like I knew Zelfa was gonna fight um Leon Woodstock. I knew that that fight was gonna take place. And we prepared for it before it even happened. Pat, when do you know what the situation is regarding if a rematch will happen or not? When will you know that? No, no, no. Well, do you know what? I'm going to see Frank on Thursday. Yeah. I'm going to see Frank this Thursday. And hopefully we'll, we'll have a talk. We'll discuss Lyndon's future and his, you know, what's going to happen from there. Like I said, it's, it's nothing that we're, we're scared to have the rematch. You know, if anything, well, where was the most threatening to me was the first fight with Anthony Hard coming off a defeat, yeah. I think he was more dangerous now because coming off a defeat, wanting to rebuild his career, yeah, again, it was the same with Leon Woodstock. Coming off a, a fight is more dangerous because where are they going to go from there, really? Yeah. Where are they going to go? You get beat once, okay, that's a world title level. You get beat off a good up and coming prospect, again, so where are you going to go? Of course you're going to want the rematch because where else can you go? Everybody's seen the beating of you. Yeah, and even the worst fighter now that fights at the yard will think, oh, just throw a left jab. Even um, Spellman was out jabbing at the yard at first. Spellman was giving him a boxing lesson. Not being, I'm not being funny, but it's something that it doesn't... I don't know what it is about the jab, but it, it's, it's not taught to move... It may move the head, but it's how it moves the head. 
Spellman was, was catching him with a jab. And 12 o'clock, <laughs> when Spellman was fighting, yeah, Lyndon informed me at 12 midnight and said, Pat, make sure that fight happens. That's what he said. He said, Pat, make sure that fight happens. I want this fight. I want this fight. When I think it's already happening, he goes, no, make sure it's happening. So the next day, I thought not that they, I, I messaged George Warren and Frank saying, Can we be sure that this fight's taking place? Okay, Pat, what, what's the situation with Milford at the moment? Let's see him. What's what? What's the situation with Zelfer at the moment? When can we expect to see him out? Um, Delphi's fighting in February. Um, I'm not mentioning his opponent yet because it's not been confirmed. But who he's got, who he has got, he has got a durable tough kid. Okay. What's been put to us is very good. Yeah, so, uh, Matt, I'm going to announce some shows for uh, the early part of 2020. So we'll be on one of those. I mean, that's going to be on the, um, the Josh Warrington undercard. Yeah. Uh, cheap co co event to that. Cheap event to that. Okay. All right, Pat. Well, listen. Have you got anything else you'd like to add before we finish? No, nah, I'm just like, listen. All, all I can say is really that they needed to stop the the, the lack of disrespect towards Lyndon as a fighter and give it, give uh, respect where respect is due. Um, I'm not discrediting their camp. I'm saying they got it wrong. I'm saying Lyndon didn't win by miles, a big margin. I'm saying he did enough to steal the fight. And I would say steal the fight, yeah, because he did it with one hand. Um, and the rematch, yeah, I think the rematch needs to be built to be a money fight, a big super fight, than rather than just a fight. Because Lyndon's in this game, yeah. Andy Hard has made good money in this boxing, and I'm not saying he hasn't. And he's earned it, and he deserves it. Anybody what comes from where he's come from, yeah, he's only compared in mind. Look, he hasn't had a lot of problems to fight. I rate what they've done. I rate them. I fucking do. I rate what they've done. They've come from nothing to be where they are now. I rate them. Well, so have we. Yeah, and I rate Lyndon even more for being, for taking that. Yeah, and I promise for Lyndon, I said, look, Lyndon, once you win this, it's going to be your time now. And I'm not going to be in denial, yeah? He trust me what I'm saying. And I've got to make sure now that he can feed his family from this and he can live, yeah, and it's his time. Why do we need to give something straight away? We just took it, and now we want to give it back. That's like doing a robbery, man. And then this man say, give it back. Like, fuck off. Fuck this shit. You want it? Come and take it. Go and do something. You're a bad man. Come on. <laughs> Okay, well, Pat, it's good to catch up with you. Hopefully, we'll get some uh, news on that. Well, after you've seen Frank this week, right? and, uh, we'll see what happens in 2021. But it's exciting times, either way. Yeah, of course it is. Of course. Of course. The rematch, though, will be a knockout. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see what happens. Okay, Pat Barrett, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV uh, today. And um, yeah, I'm sure I'll speak to you before Christmas anyway, if I don't see you. And uh, yeah, I hope everything's all right. Have a good time, mate. Thanks, sir. And have a good Christmas. Thank you very much, Pat Barrett. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation, and it's special. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. <laughs>